Hello. In this video, we're going to go over how to set up a basic development environment for developing Kabelmon add-ons. Throughout the course of this video, I'll be citing some tools that I use. Feel free to use your own alternatives. Uh, the first tool that I'm using here is Modrit. I've used it to go over and get a new or create a new pack with Kabelmon on Fabric, so I have the Fabric API. And then I'm using this mod called Global Packs. It gets around a vanilla oddity where vanilla wants to store add-ons, well, data packs, inside of a particular world's save directory, which means that you have to copy and paste them to every single world. That's a little annoying for our purposes. We want them to load for every world that we create, so global packs will get around that by allowing you to drop your add-on in one place over in the resource packs directory uh, that sits right next to your save directory and it will automatically load that in. So first tool, Modrinth, go ahead and change that out if you want. Second tool, we're using Fabric, go ahead and ch uh, change that out if you want. Third tool, Global Packs, highly suggest because it'll make your life a lot easier rather than having to keep two copies, one in Resource Packs, one inside of your World Save folder. Uh, so with that, we have our basic mod pack we'll be able to automatically load what we're working with inside of uh, Minecraft. The next tool that I suggest is VS Code. VS Code is great when working with uh, JSON files like we will be inside of here. It automatically validates them and shows you where errors occur inside of the file, if any do. This will save you a lot of development time. I've seen plenty of people miss a comma when they have everything else looking correct. And you don't want to be stuck in that situation. So, like I mentioned, resource packs is where we're going to be creating our pack. I'm just going to go over the basic setup of one. The first thing that we're going to do is give it a name. So I'm going to name mine after the little guy that I made, Kalsarok. Um, and inside of that directory, we want to create a pack.mc meta. I never remember what's inside of that pack.mc meta, so I just have a note sitting around with the information. The two things inside of here, we have a pack format that should match the version of Minecraft that you're working with. In my case, I'm working with 120, but I have a extension that thinks I'm working in 121, so it's trying to tell me. 15 doesn't match up with 121. Head over to uh, the, mine, the Minecraft wiki to get more information about those pack formats and which one is relevant to your version of Minecraft. If you give an irrelevant version when the user tries to load your resource pack in, if your add-on includes one, they will be met with a warning from Minecraft saying that your resource pack wasn't made for that particular version of Minecraft, and we've seen plenty of confusion with that. So to avoid that, make sure that we add the right pack format inside there. In description, Feel free to go and add the description that'll show up when the user goes over and uh, enables or disables resource packs inside of their resource pack interface in game. Um, uh, a little guy. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I'm adding for mine. Feel free to add, you know, details that are relevant to yours. The next thing that we'll do is inside of that folder, we'll also create a data folder for the data pipe side of things and a assets folder for the resource pack side of things. That's as far as I'm going to get into that. For the remainder of the files that go inside of there, I recommend heading over to the Kabelmon uh, wiki, where we have tons of tutorials over on the add-on creation page. You can reach that by going to the main page and clicking on this add-on creation link at the bottom. It goes over a bunch of tutorials that go from stem to stern on how to do a particular thing. For me, I'm adding a new Pokemon, so I go over and creating a custom Pokemon. If you want to create, if you want to add to something that's already in the game, that would probably be more in regional forms. But if you're doing anything else, if you're doing a texture replacement, animation replacement, what have you, there's specific tutorials for that. We also have um, links on how to add, how to manage the individual files, like spawn conditions, and sounds, and spawn detail presets, and whatnot, um, as well as the new fossils that came out in the latest version. So, 
visit that. If you have any confusion off of what you're reading in here, please stop by the Discord and head over to the add-on development channel. The Discord can be found back over on... Where is our Discord? In here. Uh, if you head over to gobblemon.com Discord. So, if you have any questions, feel free to come over there. We're usually available to help. After that, I think the only thing that we want to make sure is here. Let me check this real quick. Inside of the config, we have global data and resource packs. This is the Tommel that plays a config for the global packs mod that I had you get. We want to ensure that under data packs, it says required resource packs. That will automatically load the data side of this add-on that we're developing because it's inside of the resource packs directory. If you want to move those around, by all means, be my guest, but the default works just fine. Let's see, anything else that I'm missing? Da, 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 da. Oh, right. If you want to create models in order to add them into the game, you're going to want to use Blockbench. When going through Blockbench, make sure to select Bedrock Entity, Create New Model. Uh, you want to work with Box UV. Do not select per face UV. It will cause the game to crash when it attempts to load your uh, model. However, mm, I think that was in last version. I think now it just refuses to load the resource back. So, Calcerock. Calcerock. Feel free to give a file name and a model identifier that relate to the model that you're creating. Do that, and there we go. Just start popping through this. This won't be a block bench tutorial, but those were important steps to setting up your block bench environment. All right. With that, we are at the end here. Um, as for tools that I say you should absolutely use, we have block bench and we have VS Code. Those will help you out a ton. They're what the rest of the community uses or what the rest of the community should use. Uh, and they make life easy. If you have any questions, again, Feel free to stop by that add-on development channel inside of the official Discord. Thanks for stopping by.